a robot as a personal chauffeur, a self-driving truck, or a remote-controlled rental car? Is this what the traffic of tomorrow looks like? Mobility of the future, now on Shift. A humanoid robot behind the wheel. That still takes some getting used to, but don't worry, so far our metal friend is only for testing. Cameras in the eyes are scanning the road. AI systems determine what actions are required to drive the car and react to the change of a traffic light or a person stepping onto the road. Researchers at a university in Japan's capital Tokyo have developed the robot Musashi. It has a human-like skeleton, muscles, and four sensors in its hands and feet. With 74 artificial muscles and 39 joints, it can apply the handbrake, activate the blinker, or step on the gas. Musashi is still a long way from being an alternative to humans. So far, the robot is only able to drive across the test site at 5 km per hour. But in the future, it should be able to drive any car. And scientists assume that a robot like Musashi will be much cheaper than a self-driving car. In San Francisco, self-driving cabs from Waymo and Cruise, for example, are already part of the cityscape, but they're also causing a lot of anger and protests. Cab drivers fear for their jobs, users fear for road safety, and they're quite expensive to operate. A German startup is experimenting with a different solution. They wants to revolutionize individual passenger transport with remote-controlled cars. The idea behind it is a door-to-door -door service. A teledriver directs the electric car to the customer, who then gets in and drives to the desired location. Then the car is handed back to the teledriver, eliminating the parking struggle. The idea is that the service costs the customer less than using a cab. Thomas von der Ohr founded VE. He used to help develop autonomous robot cabs in the US. With his startup, he's now focusing on teledriving. It's a different approach to autonomous driving that allows us to get to market much faster and realize a lot of benefits for us as a society. We can't just hope that self-driving technology will work one day. Alina Presti is one of the first teledrivers. She steers the car in the office, but it's just like being in the car itself. Cameras allow a 360-degree view on the screen. The communication is via radio. The car is connected to several networks in case one fails. In an emergency, Presti can stop the car with a button. Teledriving is just like normal driving, she says. It's like I'm right there. We have microphones installed on the car, and I can hear the sounds of an ambulance coming or the police driving by. I hear it all through my headphones. They still has to wait for commercial use in Germany. In the US, however, electric vehicles can already be ordered by app in the Las Vegas metropolitan area. What Wey is doing with cars for private transport, another German startup wants to achieve for the logistics sector. A practical test is already underway at the port of Muga in Estonia. And right there, the vans from the startup Fernride already drive autonomously 80% of the time. Only when loading and unloading does a teledriver take over for the delicate moves. That's how they can monitor up to four trucks at the same time. Very soon, Schenker and Volkswagen will also deploy the first remote control vehicles on their factory premises. Hendrik Kramer is one of the founders of Fernride. Because there is a shortage of tens of thousands of truck drivers in Germany, demand in the logistics sector is high. So the pressure on the industry is huge, and our customers are giving us feedback that they're very, very grateful that the technology already works. But they want us to roll it out so fast that we almost can't keep up with the deliveries. It's great having a situation like that as a company. 
Fernride has no problem finding enough drivers, Josef Manka is one of the first 40 teletruckers. He stopped driving long distance because of back problems. The constant jolts on the road had taken their toll on him. Now his life is much more relaxing. I was on the road alone in the truck for weeks at a time. Your family, your friends, everyone suffers. And now I have my weekends to myself. I don't have to clean a truck somewhere on a Saturday before getting home. I just leave the company on time. But how safe would teledriving be on public roads? Accident researcher Siegfried Brockmann took a look. It has to be said that in city traffic, it's extremely complex because the driver has to have a 360-degree all-round view. I'm not sure that anyone can actually do that on a computer and be attentive all the time. On the highway, though, it's much, much easier because the traffic is much less complex. So there, I think it's actually an approach that's feasible and can also bridge the gap to fully automated driving. Trucker life is tough and there just aren't enough drivers available, which is why manufacturers are researching autonomous driving alternatives. Is this the future of trucking? On a short stretch of Germany's Autobahn A9, just north of Munich, the Atlas L4 is making its rounds pretty much by itself. Behind the wheel is driver Özkan Ulukan, but he's much less a driver than he is an engineer. One of a small group at truck manufacturer MAN. Their goal, to have the 40-ton behemoth log miles without a human on board. Arrows out and autopilot. For testing, the truck drives itself 10 kilometers northbound. It turns at the next exit and takes the same way back. Sounds simple, but this task is only possible thanks to an impressive rig of processors and a mind-blowing array of sensors. Up on top, we have our rooftop bar, which holds most of the sensors, LiDAR, cameras, and there's also a high-precision GPS system built in, which helps us find the vehicle's exact location within two centimeters. There's more sensors at the bottom front, radar, LiDAR and cameras. They're monitoring road markings, the traffic around and virtually anything the system needs to find the truck's perfect trajectory. It works to a certain point. In its current phase of early testing, the engineer does act as driver whenever unusual maneuvers need special attention, when construction has a lane shut down or to exit the highway. We're starting with simple situations and we will develop and improve the system step by step to include lane changes or piloting the truck off rest areas. Once perfected, MAN sees enormous potential for autonomous trucking. Interest in the project is huge because in Germany we're seen a bit as trailblazers. We're developing the whole thing, developing it safely with a number of laws, rules and regulations already in place. And we do believe that we can scale the technology and enter other global markets, including the US and China. The company has invested millions on a long-term bet that the shipping sector simply won't have enough truckers to keep going as it has been for decades. Autonomous vehicles could relieve the sector and take care of long-distance hauling. Truckers could afford to work closer to home, servicing shorter routes off the highway. Of course, not everyone is happy to have driverless trucks take to the road. I find this difficult. I'm worried. Nobody knows if the computer or whatever is behind autonomous driving, if they can really do it. In some situations, there have been accidents. I can't really see this happen. On the safety side, I'm not so worried. After all, our current trucks already have a lot of safety assistance built in, including lane keeping assistance, forward collision warning, and so much more. It's fantastic. It lessens the risk of human errors on the driver's side. If they could combine autonomous driving with electric engines, it would be even better. Meanwhile, for MAN, highway trucking is merely the beginning of the autonomous revolution. Once the AI is ready for more complex situations, it will be tested in public transportation, servicing bus lines in Munich. 
In South Korea, things have already progressed. Autonomous buses and safety drivers are already being used in regular services there, so far only at night. But passengers who dare to use the service do not have to pay for it during the test phase. The world's first late-night self-driving bus. While Seoul is no stranger to driverless vehicles, these buses are the first to operate overnight for public transport. I noticed a signboard in front of the bus indicating that it is a self-driving bus. At first, I was quite scared, but I think it's not as bad as I thought. The autonomous buses have been connecting Seoul's busiest neighborhoods Hongdae and Dongdaemun since December 2023. Safety is the top priority. Passengers aren't allowed to stand and must fasten their seatbelts once seated. Moreover, children under six are not allowed on the bus, even when accompanied by their guardians. But the self-driving bus is not fully autonomous, at least not yet. On board, there's a research engineer monitoring activities and a so-called safety driver sitting behind the wheel in case something goes wrong. It felt awkward at first. My hands instinctively tried to reach for the wheel even when it was unnecessary. Seeing the wheel move on its own, I kept grabbing it as everything was new to me. Now I understand that the bus operates well on its own and I've become used to the bus. The passengers are excited about the technology, but some do have doubts about safety in the future when there will be no safety driver. That scenario is a long way off, however. In South Korea, fully automated driverless systems are still not legal. I'm excited about the development of self-driving buses because it could enhance our convenience. But first we have to wait and see, as the safety of the operation and the bus's immediate response to various situations need more monitoring in its early stage. If the bus becomes fully unmanned, it could also be a cause for concern. For now, passengers can ride these self-driving buses for free, but Seoul plans to eventually charge a fare like other night buses. There are already plans to extend the autonomous bus line to connect Seoul city centre to more suburbs. The self-driving night bus could contribute to the revitalization of public transportation.